Hello friends and welcome to my third tutorial on route creation in Dovetail Games Train Simulator 2021. This is Old Dad coming to you from Southeast Tennessee, United States of America. This time we're going to talk about curves and radiuses and the easement tool. In the last tutorial, we began working with the linear object tool in the toolbox of the route creator. We looked at how you lay basic tangent track and how you make a basic junction. If you haven't seen that tutorial, it is the second in this series. Laying curved track is naturally more difficult to line up than tangent track. As you lay track using Google Overlay in the route editor and you reach a curve, you want to keep the curve one continuous radius if possible. Doing that will ensure that you have a smooth curve. Once you become more familiar with laying track, in general, you should then begin to practice using the easement tool. We will discuss all of this as we roll along. We will now leave the train we are riding, which is running over the route I'm creating in Train Simulator. That route is a segment of the current CSX Nashville to Chattanooga mainline, originally built by the Nashville, Chattanooga and St. Louis Railway. So hang on, here we go to have some fun. Okay, so here we are in the Chattanooga tutorial route that we created in our last tutorial together to demonstrate how to lay track. So as we start out here, we want to get the linear object tool going. So we select the linear object tools button, which is this piece of track here. And then we go down and we select the piece of track that we want to lay. And we're going to review for just a minute how we lay tangent track. So we get the linear objects tool here on the uh, terrain and we align it in the direction we want to go. We'll just go straight ahead from where we are. And you see when we left click on it, the linear object tool turns into this series of lines and it's yellow and it will make a tangent track for us, a straight track. And we can make a track up to 500 uh, meters long and it will snap to the ground and then I've got the follow network ticked over here and each time I snap a track it will follow to the end of the network the track that I've just laid so again that's how we lay tangent track and remember the yellow lines indicate it's going to be a tangent track now if I right click it, un it disconnects the linear object tool. If I want to connect that back up, I just let it sort of, it's like a magnet. It just attracts itself right back to the track. Boom! And there it is. And I can continue to lay straight track. Now let's talk about again some of the detail over here. I said I was going to come back to this particular line right here. Main line. So what I want to do, again here's the the linear tool is I want to go in this direction, but it's aimed the wrong way, so I'm going to I'm going to left click and rotate it around until it's aimed the direction I want it and then I'm going to let off the left click. Tink and there we are. So now I can head that way. <clears throat> now when I right click it's going to maintain that trajectory that I gave it which is good. That's the way it, it needs to be because I'm going to continue to operate in that direction. Let's go up here and look at this. Type of line, main line, yard, passenger, or freight. What that refers to is the degree of curvature that you can actually get in the track with main line being the most gentle curve. I'm going to do this in, in this manner and show you. Okay, this is a demonstration of piece of straight and then I'm going to make a turn. Okay, now that is as sharp a turn as I can make with main line track. Okay, we're going to change this now to passenger. I'm going to do approximately the same starting point. We'll do a little piece of straight and then we're going to turn a radius. You see that radius 
is sharper. Right click, get the cursor, I mean the uh, linear object tool back. I'm going to change this now to freight. A piece of straight, an even sharper curve is available. So finally we reach yard, which is the sharpest turn that you, radius that you can get. A piece of straight. And there you are. So those are four different ways that you can achieve a sharper radius. Um, most of the time I generally use yard. That way I'm not having to, oh well I couldn't get a sharper turn as I wanted. I've got to now come back and relay a section of track. I just leave it in yard and then I adjust the curve where I want it and that gives me the sharpest radius that I should probably have for any given rail line uh, without going any sharper than I should, uh, if that makes sense. Um, I'm better able to control what I want if I just leave it on yard. And that's my personal preference. Um, I have not had it explained through any other tutorials or anything that I've read that it makes any difference other than the radius of the curvature that's available for that particular given piece of railroad. So we'll undo, 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 undo. So here we are. Back at the starting point. Set our speeds back to 30. I'm going to set this to yard. And we're going to now turn on Google Maps. The Google Overlay, I should say. Alright, I'm going to do something else. Here we are. And I got out of the linear tool. I'm going to highlight this and I'm going to align this little tile with the track that we're actually going to attempt to lay some track on top of. So, let's see where we go from here. Okay, so we're now ready to try and lay some track. So I'm going to choose my PC main track yard. I'm going to set my speed for 30. And I'm going to set yard. And I'm going to come down here and we're just going to pick a spot. We're going to try and get our little cursor lined up, our little linear tool lined up in the direction we want to go. Now, you see I started out. Doesn't look like I'm exactly following things there, does it? So what I need to do is I need to come back right click one time and just slightly re readjust until I start getting it heading in the direction I want it to go. Another slight readjustment. Another slight readjustment. Trial and error folks, you gotta just try it out until you get it the way you want it. Now I'm looking at it vertically and I'm gonna come down here and this is strictly guesswork on our part. Um, that appears to me to be about where the tangent ends, the straight section of this track ends, so we'll stop right there. Now, I'm going to bend this into a radius, and we're actually going to lay some track right on top of the Google Maps overlay. And we get it about where we think the tangent begins there. Now we're going to start the tangent out again and look. By guesstimation, ah, I missed it. So there's two things that we can do. we can sort of disconnect there. I can do an undo 
can take me back here, snap it back in again, and try again. Trial and error. Until we feel that we've comfortably gotten it where we want it to be. And look, I missed it the other way this time. So, when I do that, here's what I prefer to do. Sometimes you got to get down close to get it to snap in. What I prefer to do is to bring it out to where I think it should be, and if I miss it, I'm going to use this tool right here, the split tool. I'm going to click that, I'm going to come down here, and I'm going to pull in close. i got to right click and get rid of that. I can't adjust it, because sometimes when you have a tool actually out, you can't make some of the finer adjustments. I'm going to click the split tool again, and I'm going to split it right there, and I'm going to take this little section of track out. And we'll start up again. Oh, I missed it. Got to get down close. Now we're snapped in. All right, still not in perfect alignment. I'm going to snip it again. Look at that, I'm getting closer. Sometimes you want to carry this out pretty far if you've got a long straight. So here's where the next radius begins to take effect. We're going to snip it one more time. Just a little short section. Now, I want to say something about this. There's a, an anomaly in Google Earth where they the, the tiles of Google Earth come together. There can be misalignments. And you've got to go through there and look at that and, and kind of average it out sometimes. There's some obvious deviations in the track there that are not in it in the real world. Mainline track would not have this little humpty humpty right here that we're looking at in it, more than likely. So that's a little tile deviation in Google Overlay. I'm going to snip it one more short time and see what that looks like. We're getting ever closer. There's another deviation of sorts there in the track. Look at that. Now we're starting to get pretty darn close to where we want to be. I would say one more tick will get it. Set the speed because I think I'm coming down to the last moment here. There we go. I'm going to have to say I'm pretty darn good on that. So we got to come down and pick a spot 
where the tangent begins. Look, here's another deviation. This is a diamond. This area right here is a diamond, and you can see the detract alignment is not exactly the same. So we're going to just have to take it that uh, it won't be perfect, but it'll be as close to perfect as we can get it. Now we're going to radius around this track. <coughs> we're heading towards downtown Chattanooga. Ah, now, here's a good example. Notice that I can't, I'm pulling this as tightly as I can, and I can't keep up with the radius that the real world is. That's because I have this ticked on main line. I've got to lower that down. I forgot to tick yard. I'm going to tick yard, and then I'll be able to pull whatever radius around there I want. And so here we go. Now I can pull that radius right on around. Somewhere the tangent is beginning under this bridge, so I'm just going to guess that it's right there, and let's see what that does. Nope. I think my radius looks pretty good, as good as we can get it, using Google Earth as our means of telling where we're going. So here we are. You can see you can you can darken this up to make your track to completely disappear. That's why you got to kind of have some opacity to it. I'm going to snip a little bit off of this and see if we can get it headed in the direction we want it to go down this next straightaway. Nope. Need more. All right. That's mighty darn close there, folks. Still staying pretty even. Ah, look, I've run out. I've gone 500 meters. Click. Now we'll continue. And we've reached the next turn. So I'm going to pull it down here where I think think about what appears to be about the end of the tangent and start my next curve. And I don't have yard ticked. I'm ticking yard again. Got to come back and start over. Appear to be about the end of the radius starting into the next tangent. The radius of the curve. You get better at this as you go along. So I may not have come far enough that time. That means I've got to undo the entire curve back to this point. And what I want to do is get a reference as to where I should have stopped. Now, one way you can do a reference is to use an object out of your um, selection of stuff over here, odds and ends. You can choose just about anything you want. Uh, let's see what this signal post looks like. That's not a very good object. Um, a pin or, you know, a... I mean, I could use a tree. Let's use a tree. In this particular case, I'm going to use a palm tree. I'm just going to set that right there because I know I want to go a little farther than I did that time. That's kind of my marker I'm using right there. That's not what I typically use, but I haven't imported what I typically use. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come here and I'm going to tick that and I'm going to 
delete that piece of track and we're going to start over with that curve and this time I'm going to take it a little farther around the radius of the curve. So we're back to the track. PC main track yard. Tick yard here. I'm going to go ahead and tick 30 miles an hour and 30 miles an hour and I'm going to hit here and we're going to go around and bring it to the point a little bit farther this time and tick it and let's see how it looks now so it went a little bit too far that time so we'll take a little bit of it off with the snipping tool Okay, that lines up pretty good. And we're going to come up here. This is under an interstate. I know this track continues on. Uh, we'll continue on to the other side of the interstate there and stop it. All right. Now, here comes a neat little trick. I'm going to turn off Google Earth for the moment. I'm going to right click and get my linear tool. We're going back to the start of our little line that we've just created through Chattanooga, Tennessee. Okay. What we have now is one of the two tracks that passes through this territory. We're now going to use the um, offset tool to lay the second track. Now what the offset tool is, does is when I click that, um, Actually, I've got to set up the uh, select tool, and I'm going to select this entire track. Now you see what I did. Let me just—I'm I'm not explaining. I, I clicked the select tool, I clicked on the track, and that little box appears. Now you see I've got a movable pin that it also highlighted the center of the track gray. So I can move that little pin all along the route that we have created. Boy, we laid a lot of track there in just a few minutes, didn't we? Let me continue right on down. And because we know we have a parallel track the entire route, we'll take it right to the end. Bing. And there we are. I'm going to go back over here to the beginning. And I'm going to click the offset tool. Now you see that two parallel lines have appeared in the offset tool. And what that is going to do is when I select the thing that I want to offset beside the track, it will follow in perfect alignment. Ah, I blew the whole thing there. Uh, I ticked one too many times with my right click. It's going to parallel whatever we put down here, whether it be another track, it could be a station platform, the entire route perfectly along that line. So I'm going to turn Google off again here. Control G. G. Come on, Google. Back out of this. Control G. Okay, goodbye, Google. Here we go. When you have Google on, when you're trying to fly over large areas, it does tend to slow the process down. Tick. 
Now we're going back to the beginning, flying back in a hurry using the shift key. We're going to click the offset tool and the next thing that we've got to do when we click the offset tool is we need to determine this distance right here, the distance of offset. So in this case we're going to set the center line between these two tracks. Now five meters is typically the default setting but when I was just looking at that on Google Earth, which I can't get to come back up because I already have it out, I think it needs to be a little less than that. I'm going to set it to four meters. Now when I look at that, I'm saying that's awfully close. Looks like it's going to be too close. So I'm going to set that back to five. It doesn't like, uh, in other words, I don't think if I do 5.5, it's actually going to do 5.5. Because if I tick here, ah, I'm afraid I'll lose it. I'm going to put it back to 5.0. All right, now what we're going to do here is we're going to select the track again, and it is PC main track, and I'm going to tick this little box with it, and look what happens. There it is. And it carried it up to this point. I'm going to hit PC main track again, and tick this box, and it carries it on down to another point. PC yard track, tick the box. I probably have one more around here. Nope, it took it all the way to the end. So I could also set a third track that way if I wanted to. But there we are, we've got a parallel line that's going to mimic everything that our original line did with the offset tool. And it's slightly off. If I could make that four and a half it would probably be a little better in line. I don't think that I can make that four and a half. I don't think it accepts half tools. Now, let's play a little more. Look at that long crossover it has there. I'm taking off the shift G for a moment for the Google and we're going to talk about laying a crossover right here just right quick. Put the shift G back on and I'm going to pick PC main track and that is a very long crossover so I'm going to actually probably put this down on freight just for the fun of it. I'm going to rise up in the air and I'm going to see where I think those points begin. And I may have to make Google get a little darker to tell. There's the switch machine. You see it? There's the switch machine right there, the electric switch machine. So we'll just start right there and see if we can make, oops, I forgot to tick one box. I need to tick this snap to track box right here. Boink, which I just did. I'm gonna click right there and we're gonna start off. And here we are to where I think about the middle of the crossover is. And I'm gonna tink that. Now we're gonna pull down and we're gonna see if we created all the stuff that we should create there, which would be the frog we did created the frog, we created the guardrails. Now I'm going to continue this on and you, now with the snap to track radio button ticked, notice that when I get close to the rails over here, the rails highlight and it brings me right in. I'm going to go ahead and click there where it wants to end and look it created the next switch in the crossover. I have the frog, I have the guardrails, I have the points. In this case, I've made a mistake and I've left the manual switch button ticked over here and so it will not be an electric switch. But there is a nice crossover. I would have to set the switch machines so that they would operate. get Google Earth to come back. Control G. Oh, see sometimes you think that Google Earth's not coming back but you just took the opacity of it down to the point that it's not there. Now look, as we look there's the crossover in the real world and we created the crossover in our route. 
nice set of points, frog, guardrails, and switch machines. At some point you would come and you would see that you got all the switch machines in the position that they should be in. Again, this should be an electric junction, not a manual. I made a mistake and left the manual junctions ticked. In this case, you'd have to go take the points out and untick that radio button and then you could lay in the electric crossover. Gonna spin this guy around. And we gotta get him down to where the points are. The switch machine cannot live where the points are not located. And here are the points. operator switch operator now we need to see we got a little alignment issue there we'll turn that just a little bit and then we'll drag this back just a little bit and look there we are we're all lined up and we had a, a set of crossovers and we've laid a double track main line in Chattanooga Tennessee the next thing that we've got to do is when we do this offset tool, we have these bumpers in the middle of the track where we have to weld that track together. So we go up here to our toolbox and we hit the weld button and you see that our little box over the track appears. We hit that and that's now a contiguous piece of track. Everywhere you had that little box to tick in the offset tool, you have to do the weld. In that case, there were two. So let's look at it overall, just for a second. That's a nice long section of track we laid in short order. And we're going to look at it in Google Earth, what it will let us see. Here's another set of points and a set of signals back here at the Wheeland crossover. But you see, when I change the opacity, you can see our tracks living there where the double track main line is in Chattanooga, Tennessee. all the way up to where we made our crossover. This is an important interlocking with the North Norfolk Southern Railroad called 23rd Street. And this happens to be 23rd Street and this happens to be Interstate 24 in Chattanooga. So we have, uh, this could be a very fascinating route to create in train simulator. You have branch lines, you have main lines of Norfolk Southern, CSX, be rather elaborate a lot of work now what I will say about it is two things this would quickly lend you to being operating a train the way that I did it in a flat world notice that we have no scenery the most famous landmark in Chattanooga, Tennessee is Lookout Mountain, which should be in this area right over here. It's a huge mountain. It's, I think, about 1,800 feet. Um, and it's very prominent. And in my next tutorial, we're going to talk about terrain and how we get that terrain to appear. So we've just played tonight or in this tutorial, I should say, it happens to be night where I am, uh, with how we lay some tracks. There's lots more to learn about laying track. The track that we laid tonight is all um, what I would call 
hand laid. It's not specific. You can get down to making certain that if this is a three degree curve, we entered it as a three degree curve using the radiuses and whatnot. This is fast. The drawback to doing it this way is that when you operate the train, there are no easements in the curves. You cannot put elevation into the curve. And in real railroads, for the speed, you have to have elevation. But when you hand laid the track, I'm going to show you the result. So I, let's say this curve should have elevation in it. So I'm going to use the selection tool and we're going to start right here in this straight and we're going to go around through here to the end of the straight and select that. I'm now going to click on the elevation checkbox here in the track rule. And I don't know whether you noticed it or not, but when I did that, look at the bend that put in the rail. This feature cannot be used with hand laid track where you just come in and lay it down as you see it in Google Earth because look what it does to the rail. Look at the bump that it puts in the rail. Not very prototypical. The train would hop right off the track if it met that as the wheel rolled up. So this is the way that you can do it but realize that you will not be able to operate at high speed prototypically without super elevation of the curves. Now typically this track with a gentle curve might sustain 30 miles an hour, but it's probably got maybe an inch of super elevation in it, but I can't put any super elevation in it because of the way I laid the track. Now, the simulator trains will operate over this just fine. You might feel a bump, especially if you didn't get a nice smooth transition around through there. And it's much more complicated, but what we're going to talk about in another tutorial is using the easements tool. Here is the easements tool that I've ticked over here and when I go to lay a piece of track you will see that we get quite a different appearance. See we got all sorts of lines coming out there. That's because if I follow this around and I go around the purple lines I will have a curve with a transition from the tangent into the straight. So I lay a piece of straight here and then as I look at this curve I can consistently follow the same radius around a turn with the easement tool. In real life they have what is called a spiral in the curve as you enter the curve which will be a different radius than the actual uh, base of the curve all the way through. If let's say it's a six degree curve the spiral will have a slightly different radius but in the train simulator world, you have this easements tool which will allow you to set a curve radius. Let's say we set it at a radius of 1145.6. I'm not going to get into explaining what that is right now, but I click that and I've started the curve. Now the gray line in this carries my 1145.6 on out. Well, somehow I must have messed that up. Let's go back and look. I'm going to right click one time and I'm going to undo. And we're going to come back over here and we're going to get back on our piece of straight track. Let's try that again. Let's set us a radius going around the corner there. And we're going to say it's 840. We're going to say it's 846.5. Right? So now when I go around the gray line, that should be 846.5 to infinity. There it is, 846.5. I stay with the gray line, 846.5. I stay with the gray line, 846.5. It goes off into infinity if I wanted it to until I circled back around and came back to the track again. Now, if we come back here and look at this, and you've got a high speed route, when you set the elevation in there and take it around the curve in that direction, what you will find, and we'll get down here where you can see it happen, 
is when I tick the super elevation, it's going to put it in the curve and it's not going to have the bump in the track. Let's move a little farther down. The easement, you see it going up and down? I've put super elevation in the curve now. You can see it there. Look, I just straightened it up. I put it in. I've taken it out and I put it in. But there is no bump in the track as there was with the hand laid track. So if you plan to use elevation, you got to learn to use the easement tool and we'll get into that a lot more. Comparing the two, this is fast. I can be operating a railroad a lot faster. The sim will operate trains with flat track. But from an appearance and, a, and from a high speed perspective, you need the elevation in there. So you can play around with hand laying your track, but then as you go to a more advanced stage, you need to learn to use the easement tool. That would be my recommendation. So at this point, I'm going to close for the night and we'll come back with another tutorial because there's tons of stuff to still talk about. We'll be talking for a long time. I hope you stick with me. I hope you're enjoying these tutorials. I hope you're finding them helpful. They're long. I realize the tutorials are kind of long, but I'm gonna, I want you to, to get into building a route and not get frustrated like I did to begin with because even with some of the tutorials that you find online, there's things that you have to learn for yourself and I'm trying to, trying to help you learn some of these things and maybe not get so frustrated. Because um, if you wind up just chucking the thing to the side and saying, I'm not going to bother with this because it's too much work, you've kind of disappointed yourself. Um, it's going to wind up being a big disappointment. So there's lots of things that we'll learn. And be patient and continue to check back. And we'll do another tutorial on laying track and bringing in terrain and... We're going to have all kinds of fun. Good day.